looks like we are live, Liz. All right. Hey, y'all. I'm Dr. Liz. And I'm Dr. Abby. And welcome to another episode of What's Up Docs. Today, we're going to talk a little bit more about what we talked about last week, and that's tongue tension and how to begin to address it. As we talked about last week, it's often a power source problem or an access to breath problem. So what we're going to do today, Abby's going to talk a little bit about how to exercises to use in the PT studio to start to address it. And then next week, I'll talk about how to begin to address it in the voice studio or how I begin to address it in the voice studio. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to Dr. Abby. Awesome. So I think um, something that we don't talk about enough is that your tongue actually has a lot of postural responsibility. So if you're somebody who finds themselves with their tongue resting in the bottom of the mouth, um, usually it's due to some postural component, like if you tend to have kind of a forward head, these little bones behind your ears are called your mastoids. If those have moved forward and down, your tongue will rest in the bottom, and that makes the back of your neck and the things that attach to your head have to hold your head on from the back. So if you're somebody who has like headaches, you know, neck stiffness or discomfort in the back of your head, think it just take a quick assessment. Where does your tongue naturally want to rest in your mouth? Is it on the top or the bottom? The couple things that I see in the clinic when I start talking, especially with singers about tongue tension, is um, sometimes they'll, I'll see this forward head thing, but especially for the tongue itself, I'll see like ridges along the side. So if you look in the mirror and stick your tongue out, you'll see like little ridges where your teeth sit, where you're, if you're sitting in the bottom of your mouth, your tongue will basically like, like goo, like smush around your teeth and create those ridges. That can also happen. <laughs> Liz is going, wow. Oh my God. <laughs> that can also happen um, if you're someone who kind of like braces your tongue out into your teeth to create stability. Um, some people are tongue thrusters. So <laughs> if you guys can okay. see my face right now. Yeah. Put your hand on the back of your neck and then right. brace your tongue. Feel that muscle engage. Right? Whoa, you just blew my mind. <laughs> We're so connected. Oh, our bodies are so connected. Anyway, continue. I apologize. No, that's okay. <laughs> um, some people are tongue thrusters. So especially, uh, I noticed this most when people are working at their computer, they'll sit with their tongue out and kind of like pushed up against the back of their teeth in a, in a, oh, kind of like you're matching tension to the back of your teeth um, to create stability again. So you're trying to hold your head on, you know, much more effortful way than it needs to be right. using your tongue. So if you find yourself sticking your tongue out while you're focusing or working really hard, it's not so much like, oh, I'm in the zone. I'm just like, you know, if you're somebody who kind of just like rests, like wants to go, you know, that kind of thing, if you're focused or Michael Jordan, who like lets his tongue hang out when he's focused on something else, mm -hmm. that's different. If it's like a forceful postural necessity to hold your head on, that can be a problem. And of course that pattern will wrap itself right into your singing and what you sound like. Liz, do you want to just talk for a second about what people, what sound people will make if they have this kind of tongue tension happening? Absolutely. Uh, the way we hear tongue tension in the sound is often a stridency of tone. Instead of having a nice warm sound, you'll have a sound that's got an edge to it. So, so not only do we hear that stridency, but often what we'll hear is what I call the froggy sound. That's something singers do because in our heads we sound louder and we sound like we've got a bigger voice. But really what we're doing is we're pressing the, the larynx down essentially. Oh, and giving our, I know, nice basis, huh? Giving ourselves <laughs> less, less freedom here. And the sound is less vibrant. So when I hear those things, I start to think about the tongue. What's the tongue doing and why is it doing it? And often it's doing it because we're not getting the air moving and so the tongue has to brace but now hearing this abby what i'm hearing also is that it could be um a brace for something postural that we're not dealing with so that's a whole new way for me to start thinking about tongue tension so thank yeah. you for that yes it's a way to create stability where there isn't stability elsewhere so speaking of i want to share one exercise with you to create a lot of airflow while maintaining a tongue that can be either up or down and kind of variable. It'll create uh, pelvic floor stability, abdominal activation, your diaphragm can dome up, but your tongue won't be there 
resisting or compensating. So I'm going to stand up and put my back to this wall over here. So you're going to stand with your back to the wall, your feet out a distance where you feel like you're, the wall is kind of holding you up. This is not a wall sit situation. <laughs> this is a relaxed standing. And then arms go out in front where you're going to breathe in through your nose with your tongue resting up behind your back teeth. And then when you breathe out, you're going to breathe out through your mouth and exhale completely until you get to this ridiculous place where you're kind of going, huh, 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 huh. like really get every ounce of air out and you'll feel your abdominals gathering together in the front. When you go to breathe in again, don't let this go. Put your tongue back up on the roof of your mouth and breathe in through your nose again. So it looks like this. I'm going to go for two or three breaths. And if you can't, to get a little more oomph out of it, you would pause at your full exhale for three or four seconds at the end to really give your diaphragm and pelvic floor a sense of like, like I am domed up, this is where I belong, and kind of like a neurological reset without your tongue doing all that work. So give that a try at home. Would you, how many repetitions of that would you recommend? I would probably give someone like do four or five breaths in a, in a set and do four or five sets in your day. You could do it all at once or you could do it spread out throughout your day. It just depends on what you're using it for. Um, it would be a good thing if you feel like you're someone who tends to, to have this posture with the forward head, forward head posture, or you're noticing this tongue tension, do a few before you sing and a few after. What I, I just did it sitting here, right? Mm -hmm. Which is not exactly what you were showing, but even sitting here, what I really noticed was the release at the end, which again is something we talked about last week. So you get that that full exhale everything is engaged and then when you release you really feel that expansion in your rib cage and in your lower back which is really cool and the thing that abby's talking about here putting your tongue behind your teeth that's the alveolar ridge right so the exercise that i'll be doing next week is going to utilize that position as well so abby thank you so much for that i look forward to using this not only for myself but trying it out with some of my students that I know struggle with some of these issues. All right, so next week, Wednesday, 9.30, I'm gonna talk about exercises that I use in the studio to begin to address tongue tension. And I'm gonna tie it in with what Abby just did here as well. If you got any questions about it, shoot it in the comments. We look forward to hearing from you. Have a great week. Thanks, Dr. Abby. <laughs> Thank you, Liz.